When making a part in Inventor, there are a couple things to take into account when you're going to machine it in EdgeCam. One of the things that you want to remember is take a look and figure out what face of the part is going to be the Z plane. Uh, in this case, in most cases, it's going to be the one with the most machining that needs being done. So if I look at the three views to this part, and I look at this part over here in an isometric view, I'm going to have to machine on this face. This face will then be my Z plane because this is where all of the machining is going to occur. And in the three view drawing, it's this face. So the second thing I need to take into account is where am I going to put PRZ on my stock? And again, in this case, it's really easy. To, let's do it like the initials and make sure that this corner right here ends up being PRZ. Let's start with a new part file. We'll go to New, English, and choose a standard part. And in our window, this point right here in the middle of the screen, if you highlight it, turns red, or it turns a different color than it is. And if you look in the bottom corner, that's 0, 0. So we want to start our part on 0, 0, since in the XY, this is the XY, we're drawing in the Z plane, we want our part to end up in this quadrant, quadrant 1, because that way all our X values and all our Y values will be positive and it'll be fixed at 0, 0. So let's draw a rectangle. Make sure it's fixed on that point and then dimension it correctly. The part is 3 inches in this dimension. 2 inches in the Y and what I can do, I have the students do, is I have them check by using the fix constraint and click on that point. If you get an error that says connect constraint or dimension reference or fixed geometry that means it's already there, the constraints there. You can say cancel. So now your parts ready to extrude. To extrude this correctly we look at this icon down here we see the positive X goes this way, positive Y goes this way, and positive Z comes out of the screen. So we want to take our part, if we're going to machine it in edge cam, and extrude it into the screen because negative Z value in edge cam means a cut. So we're going to extrude this into the screen. Uh, to do that, let's say done and finish our sketch and then choose extrude. And if I extrude it out of the screen, PRZ is not going to be right. If I extrude it into the screen, that point right there is 0, 0 with the Z value of 0 as well. And this part happens to be 1.5 inches thick. We say OK. We've got a good start to our part. One way to check at this point to make sure that you're going to be drawing on the right face for the different operations is go to the origin menu and choose center point click on it. I should see that point right there when I click on it appear on my sketch in the bottom corner. That's what's going to be PRC when we bring it into edge cam. When you finish the part you made sure that you've, you've worked on the Z face with PRZ being right here in the corner it's really easy to see that there are going to be three operations. You're going to use one tool to do this groove around the outside edge. You're going to use a different tool to do the pocket. And you're going to use a separate tool to do the holes. And the best way to manufacture this groove would be by making a profile and dragging the tool around a boss. And if you look, I've renamed them over here so that this is going to be a boss in edge cam and you do a profile and if you do it with an eighth inch tool it'll make it perfectly. You'll notice that these three holes will come up as holes in edge cam and you're going to use the operation called holes for milling and this third one is a pocket it comes up as a pocket and the operation we're going to use in edge cam is called roughing. 
This is a great project to do for a first time in EDUCAM for students because it incorporates three different tools. It incorporates three different Z heights for the different tools and it makes the students do tool changes as well. Uh, it's also a great way to teach students how to set up the tool library because the tool library has to be set up right in order for this to work correctly.